Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. My guest today is Kathy Andorfer. She's a national director of MSLs, and we talk about the art of excellence, how to build a career as a rock star MSL. You guys are going to love this. Um, and I have an announcement. We have to get prepared and, and get registered for Mass West, the Medical Fair Strategic Summit West in San Diego is about to kick off in September, September 25th and 26th. Amazing event. Fierce Life Sciences does such an awesome job every year with their conferences. Um, check them out. You can literally just Google Mass West 2024 and register. I'll be out there again. Mass West, Mass East was amazing. Um, so this is in San Diego. You guys should definitely be there. And I hope to see you then. Hey, guys, welcome to the MSL Talk podcast, a show specifically designed for MSLs. And all things field medical, if you get value from these episodes, please click the subscribe button and share this with others. Tell all your friends, thank you for all your support. Hey, Kathy, welcome back to the podcast. How are you? Hey, Tom, always great to see you. I am so fired up. I, guys, I can't describe to you like how excited I am about this episode and it's been a long time coming and there's there's been like a backstory to this episode but um and we have a big announcement that we're gonna make so guys you've heard kathy before she's been on this show she's one of my favorites and she's one of your favorites just from the responses that we've gotten and um i just can't wait to share her with you before we do that i do want to say that um, the opinions that Kathy is going to discuss and that I'm going to discuss are our own. They don't represent her company, um, my company. This is just strictly our own opinions, and we're going to share them with you. So, Kathy, let's just jump into it. Like, what is the big announcement? What do you want to share with the world? So my huge announcement is that the book that I have been writing and preparing for quite a long time is actually published. Yay. <laughs> so tell us about that so what is this book what's it called um and like when's it coming out sure yeah so it's called the art of excellence uh build a rock star career as a medical science liaison and beyond and it's really targeted toward new or aspiring MSLs who really want to learn how to excel in the role. Uh, but there's going to be value in it for anyone who is in the Medifair space, anyone who's interested in getting into the MSL role, or even just how to build a really good career. It's more focused on soft skills and on elevating your uh, promotability and your performance within a team and within a company. So it uh, should have some appeal for everyone, and I'm super excited about it. And, uh, you know, the idea for it was born here on your podcast. What, wait, hold on a minute. What do you, let's talk about that. How, how's that? How so? What do you mean? Yeah. So uh, once upon a time, uh, one of your first episodes, uh, you invited me to come along. And um, afterwards, I got a lot of questions from listeners. And I noted that they were different than what I was used to getting. Right, A lot of uh, wannabe MSLs would reach out to me because uh, that's a great way to break into the role is to get to know MSLs, talk to them, understand. I got a lot of those questions before, but after that podcast, uh, people were reaching out and telling me, well, I'm an MSL, but I'm new. How do I get good? How do I stand out for my peers? How do I show my value? How do I add to my thought leaders? Like, what can I do to get better? And um, so from that, I thought, oh, you know, there's not a lot of resources out there. Maybe I should write a book. I love that. So um, that makes me so happy because I know after the times that you've been on the podcast, the, the reaction and the response was amazing. And a lot of people would even reach out to me and say, oh, I heard your episode, Kathy Andorf, it was so good. And I know you had a lot of people that reached out. So your idea was that, okay, all these people are looking for more information. They have questions and they're looking for knowledge. So was the idea to um, basically just try to do a download of everything that all the advice that you could give um, and be able to reach more people through your expertise. Was that kind of the notion? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because one of my favorite things is to talk to people who are interested and want to learn and grow. But, you know, there's only one of me and I have some pretty big day jobs, too. And so by writing a book, this is a way for me to share my knowledge with more people more quickly and more broadly. So there's definitely a part of it. Uh, and yeah, really, it is basically a download of my brain. And it's everything I wish I had known when I started. All the mm -hmm. things I learned the hard way or by asking other people and kind of put together in a way that should be easy to understand and has very practical, real tips on what to do uh, for a whole number of different aspects of the job. Yeah. And I'll, I can so relate to that because that's why I wrote my book. I wrote my book for the exact same reason. It's I just... There were so many questions that I kept getting from people about the job search process that I just put them kind of put it all together and said, OK, this is my way of putting all of my best advice in one place so that when people come to me and say, hey, Tom, can you help me in my job search? It's like, yeah, read my book, go to Amazon, pick it up, job search mastery. And it, there's everything. So now they're going to be able to the MSLs and aspiring MSLs that have a lot of questions have a resource. So do they go to Amazon? Is that where they would get the book? Yes, right now, Amazon is the only place it's available. It's available in paperback and hardcover. I will be expanding my, my distribution beyond Amazon eventually, but for now, uh, that's where you can find it. And yeah, just like you, it's, uh, you know, there's only one of you to go around, but there's a lot of us who want what you know and love what you have to share. So that's, uh, it's a beautiful thing that you were able to write that book and congratulations, that's huge. Uh, thank you so much. We should do like a two for one. Like we should call Amazon and be like, hey, package deal. Could you package these things together? Because it's just they do go hand in hand because a lot of aspiring MSLs want to learn about the MSL role. There's no and guys, I read this book, by the way. So I, I know what's in the book. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I don't know. It is amazing. It it's the best MSL book that's out there. And I've, re I've read other MSL books and I've seen other things out there. This is by far the best thing that's out there. So I highly recommend that you get it. And if you're on the job search, in the job search process, you should probably buy both. Um, and it's available now, right? When's the launch date? Uh, it's August 2nd. Okay. So guys, by the time you're hearing this, this book will be available. So you need to go get it. Um, so just give us a little teaser, like for, for folks that are listening, what can they expect when they open this book? What can they expect? Yeah, sure. So, um, the, there's a lot of focus on more of the soft skills. Like what do you need as a foundation? Then once you build a foundation, what do you layer on top of that to get really good? And then once you get really good, how do you get amazing? So it's those three layers. And then it's a little bit about, you know, how you find your right fit. Sometimes people are so um, open to getting into any MSL position and they'll take whatever they get. But once you're in a company and you start to build the skills, like what else do you want to be thinking about? Are you in the perfect place for you? What do you want to do next? Right. It seems sometimes before you break into the role that that's all you'll ever want to do. But once you become an MSL, there's a lot of different ways to think about where you might find your best fit. Uh, so those are kind of the four layers of the book. And a lot of it is, like I said, some soft skill focus, like how to best build rapport with someone, how to really, really improve your listening skills. Uh, I talk about one thing called the power of 20. Uh, it's really about making sure that you're listening by not speaking for almost 20 seconds. It's really, really hard to do, but it is a master skill set if you want to be getting good insights from someone, if you want to build a comfort with them. Uh, so I talk a lot about how to do that in the book. Uh, so things like that. And then it's also, you know, work-life balance. How do you organize your time? Uh, MSL is really, I think the four foundations, I call them the four Ps. It's people skills, it's planning poise because that's another thing like you have to walk into situations where you may not know what the topic's going to be what you're going to ask what mood is the physician in how do you maintain your self composure in some very challenging situations uh, and then the last one is persistence right because sometimes we uh, are underestimated or doors aren't opening for us, we know that there's value in speaking with someone that they're going to actually want the information and education we have to share, but for whatever reason, you can't get 
in front of them, right? So how do you have the persistence to keep going when things are really challenging? So that's really the, mm. the big first part of the book. One of the things I love about the book and one of the things I want to share with everyone, and I always think of everything from a career and a, a job, like I'm a recruiter, right? So I, I think of everything as it relates to your career and your job search. There's so many people that are that are looking for positions right now or may eventually look for a position. If you're listening to this, one of the things that happens in the interview process is Hiring managers are going to assess your knowledge of industry, of the MSL role, the depth of your experience, whether you have it or you don't. If you don't have experience, they're going to want to know, you know, why do you want to be an MSL? What do you know about being an MSL? This book gives you that. This book prepares you. So now reading this book and listening to, and I'm like, I'm going to give myself a shameless plug, but this podcast has helped a lot of people because it's educated them on the MSL position and all things related to the MSL position. This book puts it all into one place. So my advice is as you're reading this book and educating yourself, remember that if you're interviewing, you can use this book to create, whether it's stories or examples or just preparation and answers, like preparing answers to questions, this is going to give you a foundation. I don't know if you had that intention when you were writing this book, but do you feel that's accurate? Oh, absolutely. And I would say, you know, whenever I've had these kind of coaching calls with wannabe MSLs, I talk about the transferable skills. Think about what an MSL does. So educate yourself as much as possible by talking to MSLs, listening to your podcast, now reading my book, what does an MSL really do? And then think about what you are doing now that is similar to that, right? Obviously you don't have the MSL experience and that is a barrier, but so many people do have other transferable skills? Are you really good at presenting, at education? How have you navigated challenging conversations? How are you with building relationships? How are you with persistence, right? Planning, all those features. Think about what your life experience has that you can tell those stories about or what's missing that you need to add to your resume. Love it. Um as as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, and it's so funny that you and I were sitting here because when we first did our when we did our first podcast, it was we were just like, yeah, we're doing a podcast together. Now we're two authors, right? Yeah. So author to author, I I loved writing my book, but it wasn't easy. It was probably harder than I thought. Um how did you feel like did you were there struggles and challenges along the way as you were as you were writing the book or was it did it just all come naturally oh for sure i mean the writing itself was easy it came very naturally it was you know essentially downloaded my brain and all the things that i would have wanted to know before i started as an msl so that came pretty naturally, but, and uh, I would get up super early. I, I wake up early anyway, but uh, when I was really deep in the writing, getting up at like four, four thirty in the morning and give myself at least a 20 minute, sometimes longer block just to get the writing out. And for me, that was like super energizing and really fun. So writing was easy. The hard part was embracing the idea that anyone would actually want to read my book, right? So definitely bumped into, oh, well, who am I to be writing this book, right? Like, why is it me? Uh, so certainly had periods of time where I felt very insecure and just kind of like, oh, I have so much else in my life that needs doing. Why am I putting my energy here? So there was certainly a little bit of that, but I just, I really couldn't help myself. So it kept going, but I'd have large periods of time where I left it sit because I had other things to do. Um, and, you know, I, I did get to do some really, really exciting things um, in my leadership career mm -hmm. and launch a couple of jobs and did some really fun things. But um, certainly had periods where I wished I had been more aggressively pushing my book forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we are. Right. It's finally here. here. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's just it is. Just uh, you, you know, I'll tell you, like, same. I, I I had a period of, like, almost imposter syndrome. Like, who am I? Like, am I really, like, am I an author? Like, am I, do I have the right to do this? And and I was, at, 
there were points where I'm like, hell yeah, I do. I mean, I've helped thousands of people, thousands of people in their job search process over the course of, you know, 25 years of, 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 you know, being in this business and the, the knowledge transfer that I was putting together, um, I was even at a point where I was like, wow, this is really freaking good. Like I was, I took a step back and I'm like, this is going to help a lot of people, which is what kept me going. One of the biggest challenges that I had is not, I had a very difficult time knowing when to stop. Mm. I kept adding and adding and adding. And my publisher was like, look, now you got to break this into two chapters. It's too much information. And you have to add more chapters. And because these, as I'm going, I'm doing my job. And as I'm doing my job, I'm seeing more, more situations and mistakes and lessons. And I'm like, okay, this person did this. I need to add that to my book because I need to help the next person so that they don't do it. Um, so I went through the same thing as you, but I'll tell you, I love what you did with this book. I love the the ease of of reading it. It's 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 very well written. And I think it's the perfect length. I don't think it, it's not an intimidating book. It's not like, oh man, wow, this is like I'm reading War and Peace. It it really was done in such a way that it's not just palatable, but it's actionable. So being an expert, and guys, Kathy's an expert, a monster rock star in this space. Can you give like some the folks that are listening to right now moving past the book a little bit? What are you seeing right now in the MSO world and what advice do you have for folks that are navigating in their career as we speak? Sure. Well, first I'll just say thank you for the way you've described the book, right? Um it was meant and intended to feel as if you were having a conversation with me. Right. There is a lot of me in there. It's a lot of personal examples. I share a lot of vulnerability about my own journey, mistakes I've made, things I've learned. I wanted it to feel very human and very relatable as I like to be in real life. Right. So that's how the book should come across. Um, so I'm glad it, it, it seemed that way to you. Uh, and yeah, for MSLs navigating the current situation, um, you know, there's there's a lot of big uncertainties in the future, right? Uh, the IRA is still uh, potentially going to cause some issues. Companies are downsizing. AI is a huge factor. Um, we're coming kind of out of the pandemic. So there's a lot more pressure to have in-person meetings, mm -hmm. that virtual component that many MSLs started in the pandemic and had not had that need to be out there, like pounding the pavement and, and doing the in-person travel component. I know some people really have to learn how to do that. And I do have some tips in the book uh, about that. Like, how do you do all of that activity and still maintain your sanity? How do you have a home life? How do you have a fun life, like all those things. Uh, so I think that's another big factor that doesn't get talked out about a lot, right? Like just learning to travel again, learning to leave home, get on planes, pack your suitcase, be efficient. Yeah. What's your forecast? Uh, you, you know, you mentioned some things that have led to, and I, I literally just did an episode. Uh, it's an MSL Talk live episode on the volatil volatility that's happening right now within medical affairs and within the pharmaceutical industry. And we talk about a lot of those things, the Inflation Reduction Act, and, um, you know, we're in an election year. That's that's definitely another factor. And, you know, the inflation, cost of money, lack of investment dollars so vc money and you know things that you know it's dried up but what goes up must come down and vice versa we're not staying down forever so what's your forecast as to like how you predict things to turn around and when oh that's uh, not an easy question to answer but i'll take my stab at it right um i think as you say there's always going to be changes. There's always going to be volatility. That's just the nature of this industry anyway, right? Even when you join a really big company that you think is a very stable one, it may not stay that way just because there's changes in pipelines, there's changes in market pressures, different forces. So that is one of the skills an MSL really needs to have is resilience, right? And agility, knowing that, okay, like this is how we did things for a really long time and something has changed and now we have to go do it differently. And the people who will succeed and thrive are those who are 
most able to adapt as quickly as possible. And really, to me, that secret sauce is um, resilience, right? And a positive mindset. Focus on growth, focus on change, evolution, improvement. I am always talking to my teams about like being solution oriented, focusing on what you can control, right? Because there's a lot of that stuff out there. And I always tell everybody that's just noise, right? Like you have a day job, you know what your strategies are, you know what your priorities are, you know what your tactics are. Go do those, do them the best you possibly can. And the better you are at that, that is your protection. If you do whatever your job is to the best of your ability, you'll be hireable for something else. Someone will tap you on the shoulder and take you to the next place. Like that is the key to success and survival in crazy times. You know, if you guys were wondering why Kathy and I are friends, like literally we are both so similar in our thought process. We're glass half full type of people and we focus on what we can control. And the one thing about being in, um, you know, volatile times and look, the, the pharmaceutical industry is a roller coaster and, and the, and it always has been, I mean, I've, I've been in the industry for like 30 years now from when I first started and it's always been a roller coaster and it always will be. But if you could just focus on what you can control, keep your mindset focused on the positives, try to filter out the noise and the negativity and remove yourself from the people that are, that may bring you down or that are subscribing to the negative, the fear, the uncertainty, or whatever might exist, because there always is a piece of that, um, and eliminate the doubt and just make every day productive and get after your goals and hit your numbers and build relationships and do all the things that you know you need to do to be successful, well, then you're going to stack wins, and the next thing you know, you're going to wind up getting promoted or you're going to wind up in a really great career and you're going to have a lot to show for what it is that you've been able to accomplish more so than if you lived with this, this doubt, fear, and uncertainty mindset. You agree? hundred percent. Love it. Thousand percent. Love it. That's why we're buddies. Um, so, all right, let's, let's recap here. So Kathy, please Take us, I don't want to, I, I feel like if we talk too much more, we're going to give away too much about the book where I want people to actually be able to read it because there really is, it's important to experience the book from beginning to end and take that journey with you and hear the stories and understand really how the book can be a resource. So just remind everybody as we as we kind of kick this off, remind everybody when the book is going to be available and how to get it. Sure. Yeah. The Art of Excellence will be available on Amazon from August 2nd on, available in paperback and hardcover. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you all get a chance to read it because it's it's really my love letter to the profession of MSLing. Mm -hmm. I've had such a fantastic career. I've loved every second of being an MSL. I appreciate everyone that I've met along the way in my journey, whether they be my peers, my leaders, physicians and other practitioners I've had the chance to work with. Like, I love this job. I love this career. And this is my love letter to it. I love it. And and one of the things that is important because this is just a little fun search, like fun fact tip. When you go on Amazon, because there's so many, there's a million books now on Amazon, like a million. So, uh, or several million. When you search, you might want to search by Kathy's name. So it's Kathy yeah. Andorfer with a C, C A T H Y A N D O R F E R E R, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, because that's going to bring you there. That's definitely going to bring you there. But if you write the art of excellence, it might be the art of excellence for something that might, there's a might, there's probably another book that, that like has the same title. Yeah, um, or very similar. Yeah. Or similar. So guys, I, Kathy, thank you for thank you. sharing your, your, this amazing news with everybody right here on this podcast. And thank you for your friendship and thank you for all that you do for this industry. And guys, thank you um, for being so supportive of this podcast and for supporting my book and, and um, just being so awesome. I want to thank you guys. And um, if, if actually you should share this episode so that others 
um, can be aware of this amazing resource. And we will see you next time, Kathy. Good luck. Congratulations and good luck with your book. And uh, you got to come back again at some point. Always, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for actually writing the forward for the book. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for all you do for this this field. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey meeting you and continuing to to develop a deep friendship with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're just getting started. Just scratching the surface. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.